Hello, and welcome back to Life Without Shakers, uh, where you find me once again in Ambleside for uh, the next in our series of Walking the Wainwrights. Um, today's walk is um, probably an iconic one, one of the more um, better known circular walks in the lakes. It's the Fairfield Horseshoe. Um, obviously, the geographical Objective for the day is Fairfield, but uh, the alphabetical objective in terms of these walks is Dove Crag, which is about a third of the way up. Um, it's not even the first one we'll get to. Um, unusually for these walks, the alphabetical objective is going to be the third Wainwright of the day. Uh, got low pike and high pike to go first. Um, and for that reason, we are going the uh, anti-clockwise direction around the circular walk um, should be about 11 miles and I think we chalk off a good 8 or 9 way marks by the end of the day so a large proportion of the ones we've got left to do in the eastern fells will be ticked off come the end of the walk and uh, as you can see from my attire it is a fabulous day in Lakeland uh, it's been a solid 26 degrees all the way up on the drive. Um, no wind at all, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, and as you can see, I've broken out the lesser spotted sun hat for the, today's walk. And as we climb up Nook Lane from Ambleside, we get our first glimpse of the walk to come. That's the uh, western side of the horseshoe coming down this afternoon and the eastern side of the horseshoe is just obscured by these trees for now but we'll see that soon enough It's rather more rock climbing than I was expecting. Here's a bit. Don't get your scrambling juices flowing. Let's pause to admire the pretty flowers. Swarming with butterflies and waspy type things. Very nice. Ah. Okay, so maybe that bit wasn't quite as scrambly as I expected it to be, as I thought it was. Because uh, here's the actual path. I just climbed up a cliff for no reason. And no sooner do we scramble up the scramble, than we round the corner and see uh, the day's first Wainwright. Low Pike, dead ahead. Since we get there, uh, they should start coming thick and fast. First half of the walk we've got... Low Pike, High Pike, Dove Crag, Heart Crag, and then Fairfield on the way up. And then on the way down, we've got Great Rig, Stone Arthur, Heron Pike, and Knob Scar. And finally, we've made it sort of up to the ridge. This is Wainwright number 19. This is Low Pike. Uh, and it turns out uh, it's a very easy one to miss. I always walk straight past it. Uh, turns out it's just a little rocky outcrop just off the main path. Um, so here we are at now 1,657 feet. And as you can see, the, uh, the height we've gained already gives you a superb view behind down towards Windermere. Ah, 
and this after a short steep wearying climb is way right number 20 this is high pike 2155 feet um and obviously it's a disappointing one um as Wainwright points out, view from the south high pike has the appearance of an isolated peak, but viewed from the parallel ridges to east and west, it's seen in its true proportions merely the flat top of a rise in Dove Crag's long southern ridge. It is entirely insignificant. Um, and it turns out it is reasonably. Um, but it's another Waymark, it's another Wainwright bagged off. One thing high pike does mark though is this uh, change in the elevation of the ridge. Uh, previously it was steep and scrambly. And as you can see now, as we progress onto Dove Crag, it's a lot shallower, a lot grassier. And I have a feeling progress is going to get a little bit faster now. to Dove Crag, weighing right number 21, which is 2,603 feet. Uh, and thrillingly, the views are fantastic. We can actually see the Irish Sea from here. Weinwright describes this hill fantastically. He says to the east, this is a mountain of sharp contrasts. To the east, its finest aspect, it presents a scarred and rugged face, a face full of character and interest. Here in small compass is a tangle of rough country, a maze of steep cliffs, gloomy hollows and curious foothills, gnarled like the knuckles of a clenched fist, with the charming valley of Dovedale below, and the main crag frowning down over all. Pretty poetic, don't you think? Anyway, enough of that, a cup of tea, then onwards to Hart Crag and Fairfield. And the other thing is, no sooner did you leave, no sooner do you leave. Crag, and you can actually see the top of the ridge there. That is Fairfield, that is Hart Crag, that is Ready for the way back. And And so we come to waymark number 23. This is a nice point of today's walk, 2,863 feet. This is Fairfield, um, which, well, <laughs> although this is a nice point, it's a fairly confusing summit. Lots of uh, different rocky outcrops and uh, shelters. Uh, it's a bit of a nice point anyway. It's uh, what Wainwright describes as the uh, the principal and largest can, so that'll do. I swing the camera around, we can uh, look across to some old friends. That uh, is uh, St Sunday Crag. We've got uh, Dolly Wagon Pike and Nethermost Pike across the valley. And as we 
We aim to make our way away from Fairfield. We get the view back down to the south. Windermere, Coniston, and the Irish Sea shimmering away in the distance there. Uh, you can also see the next two Wayne Wrights on our route. We've got Craig Rig and Heron Pike. Uh, of course, what we can't see is Stone Arthur, which is a little detour just to past Great Rig. And now we're on Waymark number 24. This is Great Rig, 2,513 feet. Uh, and according to Waymark, Great Rig has no topographical secrets or surprises. It's a plain, straightforward, uninteresting fell on the southern spur of Fairfield with gentle declivities linking the summit to continuing ridges on either side. So, that was that then. <laughs> uh, so, from here we take a slight detour off the main ridge path to Stone Arthur. And there is Stone Arthur below us. Uh, looks like we'll need to take this little uh, side path there and back before rejoining the main ridge. Come to the walk in my uh, book. You can get between Stone Arthur and Heron Pike by going down in the dip, up and down the valley, down and up the valley. Uh, I don't think I fancy doing that. Looks a bit steep from here. So, I choose to believe this is Wainwright number 25. This is Stone Arthur, 1,652 feet. Uh, I say choose to believe because, frankly, it's a bit difficult to work out exactly which bit of rock is actually Stone Arthur. Um, as you can see, if I just swing round behind me, you can see that's the descent from Great Rig. It's basically just all rocky outcrops and a continuous descent and the same behind me going down towards uh, Idle Water and Coniston um, it's rocky outcrops all the way down still. So uh, this is quite a prominent outcrop and Waymark says without its prominent tour of steep rock Stone Arthur would probably have never been given a name for it's merely the abrupt end of a spur of Great Rig although it has the appearance of a separate fell when seen from Grasmere. Uh, one thing now is about these little summits, I always find they do have uh, some of the best views and the, the best character compared to some of the, the higher fells. Uh, the only slightly annoying thing about making this detour is uh, that wall of uh, valley right in front of us. Because that is our bike over there and we've got to get back up to that ridge yet. Oh, and with some uh, skillful traversing of the contours back from Stone Arthur we're back on the main ridge path and just below the summit of Heron Pike. Just going to pause here a second. Uh, I mean we all know dry stone walls are fantastic masterpieces of construction but that one over there is a work of art. Look at it. And it goes all the way straight up that steep, steep, steep slope towards Dove Crag.
96 at 2003 feet. Uh, I say hopefully because uh, yet again, my mic says from no direction does it look like a pike or a peak. No herons be found there. Uh, it's a grassy mound on the uh, long southern ridge of Fairfield. Climb not as a rule for any attraction of its own, but because it happens to lie on the popular route to Fairfield. Uh, so that'll be annoying. This is probably about half of the fellow classified as Wainwrights on this walk. Um, even Wainwright himself has said probably shouldn't even be classified as separate fells, but he put them in his book anyway, which uh, means we have to climb them, we have to bag them. It does make it a bit awkward to locate the exact point to stand when you're actually trying to film them. But hey ho, we have uh, one more to go. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, clip I just shot was actually filmed from what Waymark Hill says is the north limit of Heron Pike. Um, I said it was confusing. Uh, this one looks like it might actually be the summit that I've described in the book. But hey oh, either way, you should walk over them all. It's just a case of working out which one you're actually standing at when you film them. Definitely 26 down now, and one to go for today. Nobscar. to a view of right our water down there. Right, this is my mate 27 finally for today. Now scar 1450 feet approximately. Um, and again it's one where I'm not quite sure if this is the exact summit or not. Um, my mate does say well Nabscar is well known through its association with the Lake Poets. They came to develop the foot of its steep wooded slopes which invested it with romance. Its commanding position of looking right or water brings it to notice of many visitors to that charming lake. Uh, although he does say also that uh, it's not a separate fell uh, in its own right. It is merely the butt of a long southern ridge of Fairfield. Uh, but there's a bit of a mound, there's a bit of a cairn, and that's good enough for me to call it. The, uh, the summit of Nabcar, Nabscar. And not too much further on from the summit of Nabscar, we come to a wall and a stile, which implies that uh, we're nearly back in civilization. Uh, and after a, a long, windy, stony, steppy path that didn't have hurt my feet, I uh, find myself outside Rydal Hall. Uh, we are almost back now. Uh, just a little shot hop along the main road, back to the car park. Uh, so it seems a good time as any to sum up today's walk. Uh, it's been hot, sunny, kind of frustrating. Searching for summits that aren't really summits, according to Wayne Wright, even though he put them in his book. But nevertheless, you can't really complain about Lakeland on a day like this. That's been spectacular as ever. Uh, and nine Wainwrights bagged, which is, let's see, a quarter of all the ones in book one. Uh, just ten to go now in the Eastern Fells. Uh, so once again, thank you for watching. And I uh, hope you can join me again for the last couple of walks as we bag the remaining few fells.